just look at the stadium, it's just crying out for the fans to be back in Villa Park. for a turn-up. It's Grealish for Villa, and it's a magnificent seven, and this is really quite unbelievable. There will be Villa fans leaping up and down all across the land and around the world. Their team have scored seven against Liverpool. Never dreamed of getting a result like this today. Welcome to Up The Villa Podcast. If you're new, please subscribe. Um, it'll help us grow massively. A little bit about the channel. We're a fan-based channel. Uh, looking to have anyone on board to come and have their say post-match or come on these previews. Um, but if you don't know, we've got a website as well where we do written work. So you can have your work published. And we do something really cool as well. We do player ratings. So if you want to come on board, have a bit of fun, rate a few of the players each game, you can do that. So the website is www.utvpodcast.co.uk. Um, some massive news for the podcast as well this week is that we landed number one in the Mongolian football podcast charts. So yes, I don't know yes, whether it. some of you have got <laughs> some dodgy VPNs or, or what, but, you know, we smashed it in that part of the world this week. So we buzz in. Um, and then, yeah, this week we've got Liverpool. So we can do the double over Liverpool, as you saw in the intro. The last time we played them, it was just a blitz at Villa Park. So um, hopefully we can do that again. So before the game on Sunday, um, Conza signed a five-year deal, which was just massive. You know, he extended his contract and it, it's just huge for us, really. And I think a statement of intent from the owners, which is massive because, you know, there were a few rumours that Conza teams like Liverpool were looking at him. So it's just huge that we've tied him down as well. So, Captain K is back on. What do you make of that? That's fabulous, isn't it? I mean, he's he's got the attributes of a young Rio Ferdinand. I know that's a big statement, but he's definitely in the making for being a really, really top class centre half. I mean, he. I mean, the, the 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 dynamic between him and Mings is really good. I think Mings brings out the best in Conser as well. Whilst um, Conser is just going from strength to strength, isn't he? And the fact that he's he's got this new deal penned in shows his commitment to Villa. And yeah, he's it's only a matter of time before he he gets into the England team. It's a, it's absolutely massive for us. And let's not forget that when we first got promoted to the Premier League, he wasn't our first choice centre back either. He was Mings and Engels. So yeah. he's been on a massive journey with us and. A little bit like Matt Target, who's been coached and has come on leaps and bounds. You've got um, Mings has got better as well. And the whole back four look, looks, looks incredible in front of Martinez and it's definitely something to build on. And it's like Ryan always say, it's a massive foundation. So just mm. quickly looking at kit watch, we've got me and Ryan who are full on brand tonight, which is, which is huge. What do you make of the Consa New Deal? I think we've got ourselves a right little gem, haven't we? 12 million could be paid for him. You know, what 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 a signing. Um, he was patient when he arrived, wasn't he? Uh, he? He weren't straight in there. And he only really played when he when he was in a back three, really, wasn't it? With Mings and House or or Engels. Um, so yeah, so he bought his time. Um, when he came out of uh, Project Restart, he was playing right back, wasn't he? And it weren't until that Crystal Palace game where he uh, where House got injured in the warm-up that he come in at centre-half alongside Mings, and we have not looked back since, have we? we just got that balance perfect. He scored an important goal against Everton in them final four games. And then he got our season up and running against Sheffield United as well, didn't they, with the opener? So I just think he's been terrific. You know, he's just immense. He's so composed. You know, he's, he's reading of the game. He's probably second to only Paul McGrath and JT in a Villa shirt. And, you know, we can put him up there with that company because... He's just brilliant, and the blocks that he puts in the ball just magnetizes to his legs, doesn't he? He's like he's everywhere. He's just in the right place at the right time always, and 
if I put Jack to one side, I'd probably say at the moment he's my favourite player. He's been huge. And something I think it's probably a little bit weird, like looking at it in this way, but when you watch like a flair player like like Grealish or say like a Phil Foden from Man City, who are like really easy on the eye, for a centre back, he's really good to watch. Like just his movement and his technique, the way he hits the ball, you know, it just I just feel like he's a real good centre back to watch. Sometimes when you're watching defenders, it can become quite erratic at times. But with him, I, I just really enjoy watching him play football as well. Justin, do you want to add anything on Conte? Yeah, I think uh, you've all summed it up very well. I think he was signed by Smith as, as one down the line, wasn't he? He was a young kid, uh, did really well in the championship. Um, so he brought him in with a view really to sort of bedding him in over maybe one or two or three seasons. But his development's been that good. Like Ryan says, when he got his chance, he just hasn't looked back, has he? I mean, he's phenomenal. I mean, I've just done uh, my latest iconic numbers, which was number four. So he comes into that. And, you know, he's only played, what, 50 odd games for us. And already he's probably one of the most important players in the team now, isn't he? You know, if Paul McGraw was God, then maybe Conor's Jesus, isn't he? Because he's, <laughs> you know, going forward, he's, you know, the, if you look at just the, the love that's shown for him, on, on, on Twitter and the, within the fan base. We all know what we've got with Conser and we have got a very, very special player. Jack is obviously the gem in the bunch, but like Ryan says, Conser ain't that far behind. He is an absolute world, potentially world-class centre-half. So to have him at our club in his early 20s doing what he's doing can only bode well for the future. It's absolutely massive. So before we get into the Liverpool game, we'll go to what some of the listeners and viewers have been sending in some of their questions and thoughts. So uh, Paul Linton sent us in, if the owners invest, say, another 100 million in the summer, is there anything but top six classed as failure? For me, it is. Kay, do you want to answer that one? Yeah, I mean, I think we should be finishing eighth this season without that additional 100 million pounds investment. I've always said it. I said eighth should be a, a good ambition for us. So absolutely top six. If we invest another hundred mil and we retain Jack and we retain, you know, our, our best players, then absolutely, absolutely top six should definitely be the aspirations. There's no reason why we can't compete with the likes of Everton and 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 even even the likes of Leicester potentially and Spurs and, and, and all these teams that are above us. And you know, Liverpool aren't having the best season right now either so it's all to play for especially if you invest that additional 100 mil because I, I don't see the likes of Arsenal putting that much cash in I don't think Everton are going to put in a lot more cash next season you know they invested heavily in the last two seasons so why not absolutely I, I definitely agree with that sentiment I think obviously the longer we're in the Premier League as a fan base our ambition as a fan base gets more and more doesn't it you know, we as fans, we're going to be wanting progress every single season. We're going to be wanting to to climb that table. And like I've said on a few podcasts ago, I think it's a big it's a big window for us basically because we get rid of some of the squad that we don't really utilize anymore. We go again and we improve the squad massively to to reach our ambitions. And it's a big one for Smith next year as well because. Our ambitions higher, the club's ambitions higher. We've got to, we've got to deliver. We've got to get better and better. So, on with you. I think that hundred million. You know, we have got to be aiming for where higher than where we finished this season. So, another one along those sort of lines is from um, Double H. Now we're about halfway through the NSW five-year plan. Are we, are we ahead, behind, or where we expected to be at this point? And how long before we reach the ultimate aim of European domination? Give that one. That's a Justin question, that is. Uh, that double H I I know, then that's a good question, that is. Um, I think we're ahead of where we wanted to be. You know, I think they, they said when they came in, that to get promoted in the first season was, was more than they could have hoped for, really. So I think when they sat down to do that plan, they would have probably earmarked this season for the promotion, Um no, sorry, last season for the promotion and this season for the first, you know, just settling the Premier League. So if you go on that, this is third season in. We are ahead, aren't we? Because we're now pushing top eight of the Premier League. Um, so, yeah, the, the, the natural progression is then to push on top six in Europe. But we are now entering the most difficult phase 
for any club aspiring to to get to the top four and, and win things in the Premier League is that last push. You know, Wolves have found it very, very difficult. Two seventh place finishes and and look where they are at the moment. It, it is the hardest bit to sort of push on to now, isn't it? So, yeah, eighth, ninth this season is unbelievable. But to get from eighth to ninth, even with £100 million to spend, you've got to catch the likes of Chelsea, Man City, Liverpool, Arsenal, Man United... You know, they're the established few clubs up there. And then you've also got the likes of, like Captain Kay said, Everton are going to probably spend a bit, although they've got the new stadium to pay for now. West Ham are doing fantastic. There's always one or two teams that come out of nowhere and have good seasons, like West Ham are doing this season. So while it's great to aspire to that, to, to what we've got to do, and we all want to aspire to that, it's, it's we've got to realise that this next step is probably the hardest step we're going to take, even harder than promotion from the championship even harder than probably staying up in the first season you know we are entering the, the pinnacle now of English football and it's 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 we've got to be very very good now to, to take that next step and patient and I think this is probably one of the the most expensive parts of the plan yeah. because what we've seen is when we got promoted we spent a lot of money on a lot of players we had a, we spent you know we had so many players coming through Last transfer window, a little bit different. We spent it on a little bit more added quality, which we got, you know, Cash, Martinez, Watkins, Troyore. That, that it's a better quality than what we had. We didn't sign as many players. But for me, this next window, you're looking at three or four maximum big, big money players that are going to take us to that level where we want to get to, really. So just, just, just quickly, I've just read today, and it's very interesting that, that, that uh, they've the Man City financials have come out and uh, Guardiola has come out and said that it's not that far away now that, they, that at some point they will be spending £100 million on one player. Now that's where we're going to try and get to go. So this £100 million to spend on, on improving our squad, when you get into that level, it quickly becomes one or two players. Mm. That's how difficult it is. And and that's that's that I, I I think we need to be spending like thirty million pound on a on a on a central midfielder. Do you know that that caliber yeah. of player? I'm not going to say names, but that that level of player really. So Ryan, you can have this one. Frank Costa. Will we? Should we go for a marquee mm. signing in the summer? Thinking Robinho type of signing for City when they broke into the Super Club status up the Villa. <laughs> Um, I don't think we need a Rubinho type of player because we've already got one in Super Jack. That's our star quality man. And for every Rubinho Man City brought, they bought 10 Benjanis. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're, we're, we are a bit more pragmatic. We're a bit more uh, methodic with our spending. We're a bit more savvy. So I think, you know, we're not just going to go and splash the cash on, on anybody. It's, you know, trusting Lang, trusting Smith. But we are going to go for that next calibre of player. And we've built from the, from the goalkeeper to the defence. We've brought a striker. But this midfield section now, like you say, it's going to be expensive. And 100 million, if we want three good attacking midfielders, wingers, it's gone. The money's gone, let alone strengthening the back five, you know, the backup, the young backup for that. So, um, yeah, like you say, checkbook out. Come on, big <laughs> summer. <laughs> Checkbook and passport out. Um, so we'll give this one to Kay. Chair, it's from Chairman Markey. Quite simple, really. Can we pull off another shock result and do the double over them? Does it depend on Jack being fit? And, um, and yeah, so do you think we'll do the double over Liverpool? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Captain. Come on. I mean, you know, the, way, the way we dismantled them, the first time round was obviously sensational, unexpected, surprising for both Liverpool fans and Villa fans, right? We didn't expect it, but there's no reason why we can't, right? There's yeah. it's all to play for. I mean, no fans in the in the stadium. I think Liverpool have really suffered. Out of every team in the Premier League this season, Liverpool have suffered the most. I think you can just see, right? They're, they're the current champions, and and you know they're rocking in Europa League places right now. So why not? I know Jack, there's a big question mark. We don't really know if he's going to be available. I'm sure we'll get onto that later. We'll talk about lineups and things like that. But absolutely, why not? If, if we can really stay disciplined, focused, and really think about our approach to the game, 
then there's no reason why we can't we can't win that game and get and get do the double over them. We've done the double over Arsenal, which is you know the first time in a long time that I can remember. So so why not Liverpool? I think it's a, it's an exciting game for yeah. us to be to be looking ahead of. You know, I mean we we're five points behind Liverpool with a game in hand now. If if you'd have listened to me saying that at the start of the season, you'd have all been like, "What is this guy on about?" You know, with five points. What's this the, guy on? Yeah, with five points behind the champions <laughs> of England, like mm. that, look at it like that. It's it's mad. Um, so we'll sort of get on to Liverpool a little bit now. Then, so Gary Plaza's asked selection versus Liverpool. Do we go with a similar team that started the game or play four four two? How we finish the game and give Davis a start? I think four four three only works with Grealish playing with his ability to draw two or three players out of position and allowing more space for others. Justin? Uh, I don't see Smith throwing the 4-3-3 away. I know that the the, 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 it worked, the change he's worked on uh, Saturday, Sunday, um, and it worked very well. Uh, the only thing I can see him doing, really, is just changing the personnel around a bit, I think. Um, I would like now, I've said this three or four times, and I would like now to see Keenan Davis given a chance to play up front, uh, which would mean Watkins moving out to the left. Um, and then you've got a choice to make on the right. I'd probably just marginally stick with Truro because he's got that bit of magic in him, um, which would be hard on Trez after coming on and scoring twice. So... You know, it's diff- it's a difficult one for Smith again. The midfield three again, again after I don't know how many times have we spoke about this in the last ten games. It's a big dis- big call for him. Um, I think McGinn worked in the ten, so I think you stick with that. Um, the only call then really is Sanson or Ramsey. I think Ramsey did well when he come on. Is it time to give him another chance, or do we stick with with Sanson? It's uh, it's difficult, isn't it? Uh, that's that's probably what I would do now if I was if I was Smith. I don't I don't think he'll make wholesale changes. It's a tough game to wait Liverpool, regardless of the form they're in. They are still the champions. They are still a very good side. So I think he might tweak it a little bit. Um, that's all I can see. Really, I don't see him going four four two from the start. One thing as well, uh, I did make a mistake in the uh, fan reaction one because I did say Salah would be the second best Egyptian on the pitch. He won't. He'll be the third because don't forget we've got King Elmo as well. So we've got Elmo, Trez, and then they got Salah. Um, they're losing 2-0 a- away at Madrid. Um, so that's a diff- that, you know, they're 2-0 down away. Coming back, it's an earlier sort of kickoff form at 3 o'clock on a Saturday. It's normally sort of... Sunday afternoons, isn't it, for them? So, got to get at them. Just got to make that game as difficult as possible from the very, very beginning. What, what are your thoughts on it, Ryan? Yeah, I think we, um, we've seriously got to have a go for it. Well, we've got nothing to lose, have we? Their home record has been awful. They've lost to um, Fulham, Chelsea, City, Everton, Brighton and Burnley. You know, but what better team would you like coming to town than uh, than Aston Villa? But um, now, in all seriousness, you know we're under zero pressure. So why not go up there and have a good go off and take the shackles off and and just go for them? Look, I know they got a good result at Arsenal, but you know it's easy to win three 0 there, isn't it? At Arsenal, easily yeah. done. <laughs> Tell me about but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I just hope we can take the confidence of that last twenty minutes against Fulham and take yeah. it in, take it in from the off. Um, as for the four four two, I think um, it could work, you know, them two up front together because they can both work the channels well. You know, I'd even be inclined with my football manager head on to, to maybe even ditch the wingers and, and have a bit of a diamond in the middle. So you've got a holding midfielder, a couple of central midfielders and a number 10, and then let Ali and Davis work the wings with, with back up from the fullback. So... You know, it might. It's, it's a tough. It, it's a tough game to experiment, really. Liverpool away, but nearer the end of the season, he, he might start experimenting a bit more. But it certainly, it certainly brought out the best in Ollie as well because it, he could get back to being a poacher as well. And, and he got his goal because he's not running left to right, left to right, left to right, is he? he? He's becoming that striker again that when he's fed, he can score. Oh, for me, oh, for me I, I think I'd start Trez. Um, you know, I, I think it's. I would as well. I think it's difficult to drop a player that's that's come on Scored and just two. completely changed that game for us. And you know, without sounding like I feel a bit sorry for him, I, 
I quite like Trez, you know, he, he works hard and, you know, he does show that bit of quality from time to time. Um, so I think I'd go with Trez. What, what would you, what would your formation and lineup look like then, Kay? I mean, I, I was thinking about this earlier and I was having a chat with my old man as well on the phone. I was telling him I was coming on doing the preview and uh, we was having a little chat. And um, I think because of their, their attacking threat, you know, the likes of Jota's comeback is on fire. You know, Mane is always a threat. Salah, you know, they got they got um, Thiago now. He's starting to get into the rhythm of things. And, and Fabinho is now back in the, the central midfield position where he belongs, right? So I would play Marvellous and Nakamba as a holding midfielder just to provide that extra protection. Um, but I also agree with you guys, definitely having... Um, Keenan Davis up top, Oli on the left, and Trez on on the right, and and having um, McGinn and Sanson uh, in the middle as well. But this is all assuming there's no Jack, right? Mm. So we're all working the team around yeah. no Jack. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Jack could turn up. You don't know. You don't Let's know. hope so. Yeah, let hope so. But if there's no Jack, then I definitely go with the four three three. Uh, but with uh, a holding midfielder with uh, Marvellous, because he can play that holding midfielder role on his own, right? You know, he's not obviously as good as Kante or Makaleli, but he's our version, right? Mm -hmm. And he's got legs for days. I mean, he can just, just he, he covers that pitch. He goes from left to right constantly, and he's always the outlet there when we're trying to play out. So I'd have Marvellous there for that extra bit of protection, and I'd have Trez, purely because he's more pasty than Traore. And with... Um, their fullbacks always playing a high line. He can get in behind, especially with Oli on the other side as well. And we've really got to take advantage of how inexperienced their centre back pairing is. So yeah. if you've got someone like Keenan Davis up there just bullying them, I mean, mm. um, Quebec, while he's not bad, he's prone to a mistake and he can be a bit rash. And and then was it the was it Nat? Is it Nat Phillips? Phillips? Nat Phillips, yeah, he's young as well. So we really need to exploit that inexperience that they've got with that centre-back two there. So I, I think having Trez coming in on the right with the pace there, he can also track back and, and help out Matty Cash as well because they're going to have Mane or Salah or Jota running at us. Um, and then and then if you've got Keenan Davis there, then that gives Fabinho something to think about as well. He doesn't necessarily have to roam forward as much because he's, he's more conscious about, you know, Keenan bullying um, the, the centre half. So that, that's what I'll go with. Brilliant. Um, yeah, to be fair, like I know we're playing Liverpool. I am actually quite excited about this game for some reason. Uh, I just, you know, Stovic don't look like you know they're going to have face and you get battered. But um, <laughs> I, I, to be fair, I've got a bit of a good feeling about it. Um, so we'll go around and we'll do our little score predictions now. Um, so yours won't look that bad, will they, Justin? Because last time we batted them 7 2. So if you go for something similar, <laughs> who can laugh at you? I know. I should have said seven two last time. Wouldn't I imagine the reaction if I'd have said that? Um, well, still be spending the winnings. <laughs> oh yeah, I've been living in Barbados now. Um, it's a tough one, isn't it? Is it? Yeah, everybody's made some fantastic points. I love that team selection from captain. Oh god, anything can happen. But realistically, can't it? You know, we're all praying Jack will be back. If he is, great. If he's not, like Ryan said, let's hope we continue the last twenty minutes. We're more than capable of winning the game. I'm going to go. We're going to go nick it 2-1. <laughs> uh, do you know what? I'm going, I'm going to go 2-1. And, and don't forget, I was bang on with my last one. 3-1. Yeah. So I'm going to go 2-1, Villa. Um, Kay? <clears throat> I was going to say 2 1 as well, but I don't there want to say go. it now. So no, I've said it. 2 1. 2 1. <laughs> I mean, Ryan? 2 1, yeah. Come on, Ryan. Queen's clean sweep. No, I'm going to go one nil. I think we'll get a goal, and you went breaking that back five of us. No <laughs> chance. Buzzing. Uh, so you know, if you enjoyed it, subscribe. Um, drop your thoughts below. Uh, who you think we should sign in the summer? Um, what you think the score prediction is going to be? Um, and just get in, get involved. Get involved with the player ratings. Get on board with the website. If the podcast's not for you to appear on, then you know you can do some writing for us as well. And it all gets published as well. So thanks for watching. Up the villa. Up the villa. Up the villa. Up the villa. Up the villa.